All right. True Footy Podcast 27, Outdoors Edition. Yeah. Thanks for your hospitality today, Joycey. No Shooting worries. on location down in Bunbury, Western Australia today. Western Australia. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, we have. I actually think most of the people who watch this are probably. Well, I think they're pretty well spread out, actually, like yeah. between the eastern states. So. Yeah. No, it's very, very hot today. Yeah. It but, is. Uh, oh well, nice day to do a podcast. Yeah. We Cric- probably hear the crickets and yeah. a few cars driving past. That's a good segue into cricket. Oh. That was seamless. Um, actually, one thing I did want to ask you before we start talking about, you know the cricket season yeah because we have nothing else to talk about how about this woman winning 107 million dollars yeah. I feel like we have to talk about it first it's pretty crazy what would you do oh, like legit yeah. I know it's such a cliche question but what would you do if you won 107 million dollars what would I do yeah I mean what would I do I'd do lot, lots of different things <laughs> what's the first what's the first thing you would do uh, the first thing I'd do would you retire no, I don't think so. Interesting. But would you stay at your current job? Or you have to stay at yes. At least for now. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, no, I would. Yeah, because your employees are job. watching this. I love my job. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, but... um, Yeah, I think I would keep working. Um, mm. But I would just buy a really nice apartment. Probably... Yeah. A really nice... Probably buy, like, an apartment in Melbourne or something. Mm. Buy a house, yeah, down here. Oh, southwest of WA. Um, buy a nice car, give all my family a lot of money. Yeah, I was gonna say, I feel like you have to if you win 107 million. I would like to, I'd, I'd love to just give my granddad like a check for like a, a million. Yeah, yeah, I mean, or even that's that. just like a small fraction of what you'd be like winning, yeah. and that's you know, a, a fortune. Life changing, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what about you? I think I would, uh, I think I would go full time YouTube. Yeah, yeah, okay. Make this uh, the EXO. This of we'd have like a professional studio. Yeah, like, yeah. We'd probably be able to afford a director and a, like an actual staff. If you could pay someone to edit. That would be alright. Um, yeah, no, that would be amazing. So that's the dream. So maybe I should have bought a lottery ticket. I did buy one. Did you? We had a syndicate at work, oh, but um, cool. I lost. Yeah. Yeah, Jesus. So many people would have poured heaps of money into that. Like, yeah, uh, uh, apparently it was like a one in seventy five million chance of winning. Wow. Yeah. That lady, she seems like such a nice lady who won it as well. Oh, like cute. she's not retiring as well. She works in health, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's so just, easy though to just win it and say, "I'm not retiring," and then true. just like, you know, yeah, she's got what forty years ahead. Like. Yeah, for us, I think she's a bit older, but yeah, yeah true. Yeah. Well, anyway. It is the season to talk about cricket. It is. Because yep. we have a few months left yep. um, of the off season. We got a bunch of questions from our Discord chat actually today, which is uh, which is nice. But keep them coming, boys. They're, um, we've got a great Discord community. So if, yep. you, if you haven't signed up already, check the link in the description uh, if you're watching this on YouTube and you'll be able to join in. Uh, so we got a ton of questions. I guess the first one um, we can answer is, Max, do you guys hate the off season as much as me? Um, yeah, I guess so. I mean, I hate there being no AFL. Mm. Yeah. I gotta say, I'm kind of enjoying the cricket season. Yeah, though. I do enjoy the cricket season, but yeah. why not have cricket and AFL season? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. I think as an Eagles fan, I'm, um, I'm quite satisfied with the way the season ended, so I'm kind Fair of, enough. I'm kind of basking in the glory of that. I'm actually yeah. not looking that forward to 2019 because it's... You, know, you can only go downhill really. <laughs> from winning a premiership, can't it? Like, you can yeah. go back to back. but that's yeah, Even that's still tough. never... It wouldn't be as good as the first one yeah. anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, but it has been a really interesting cricket summer as well. I say interesting, I mean painful for Australian cricket fans because... Yeah, pretty you know, painful. Yeah. As I said to Louis in the last podcast, like, Australian cricket fans are so quick to it's like English soccer fans like of the England national team that yeah, just eat their own as soon as the uh, as soon as things don't go well yeah and I'm one of them yeah like, I'm not I'm not saying I'm better than anyone else but yeah. uh, how do you think generally the Australian cricket team's gone this summer in in both formats uh, I think the ODIs are all right. at least they're comp- I don't I don't mind if they lose mm. it's just if they're competitive yeah um so I was actually pretty happy with the ODI team. Yeah. I think they played pretty well 
three games. The last one wasn't great. Mm. The test side, yeah, it's... I don't know, something's not quite working there. Mm. It's um, almost as though our best two players are not playing. Well, that's true. <laughs> that makes a very, very big difference. Yeah. Two of the better players um, in the world as yeah. well, Smith and Warner. Well, Smith, the best test batsman in the world. Um, Coley, Coley's better with the short format, but right. Smith averages like 10 more runs yeah, in test true. cricket. Yeah. Um, mm, yeah. But do you think... How do you... I don't think it's as bad as what probably some yeah. people make out. I think people are quick to forget how our team has been gutted by yeah. losing those three players. Plus the, you know, a completely new captain, a leadership vacuum. You like you got Tim Payne, who was not even really playing test cricket at all. I don't think he was playing test cricket before he came in and basically no, became captain. So. I think he's been a really good interim captain, though. Yeah, Tim I do too. Payne. And he's actually performed pretty well with the bat, to be fair, mm. as well. Yeah, I think he averages like in the mid thirties and yeah, it's generally consistently scoring around that as well. It's definitely the. The top order batsmen seem to be the major issue. Mm. Although the bowlers were getting a bit of stick as well. For I mm. think Cummins had a good summer. Yep. Stark and Hazelwood didn't really do that much. Nathan Lyon he had a good summer as well. That's um, true. That's true. Well, to lead into one of the questions, do you think the Australian Test side needs a reset? Ah, oh, it's a tough one. I asked this question in the group chat a few weeks ago. Um, to be honest, I think no. If Smith and Warner come back in, um, I, I still... Everyone's going to hate me for this, but I still think there's a spot for Sean Marsh in the top five. I'm, I'm actually bigger on Marsh than I am on Kawaja okay. at the moment. Interesting. Um, but no, probably not. But I yeah. think... There's not much... Com- there doesn't seem to be a heaps of competition for spots. You know, a lot of guys are a bit safe. And at the end of the day, you have to perform. Um, like true. Matthew Wade, he's banging the door down. Still doesn't get a look in, even in the squad. Mm. Um, I, I feel like sometimes maybe you, they need to reward domestic form a bit more yeah. and rely a bit less on... Um, you know, what people have done in the past or their reputation. But sometimes they'll just pick someone because they think they're more of a chance to make it at test level, it seems. Yeah. So, like, someone like a Matthew Wade. I guess Matthew Wade's had quite a few chances, but, um, you know, Burns, Chad Sayers, uh, the fast bowler, for well, instance. I think that one's big with Kawaja and Marsh. The selectors just think they have the, the potential. The talent. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then some players are just inexplicably overlooked, and that's been going on for decades, like... Brad Hodge and Phil Jakes and these... I guess they played in an era where the Australian yeah. team was amazing. Yeah. yeah, I guess. So, you know, these guys can make a mountain that runs at shield level. Yeah. Um, not that that's really happening now. Joe Burns is the interesting one for me where he's, he's literally making a mountain of runs and he can barely get a he look at He probably at deserves another another crack. Yeah. Um, I quite like Renshaw as well. Yeah. He hasn't been great in shield cricket, but mm. he's definitely proved in the past that he's capable of playing at the international level. Yeah. So I wouldn't mind giving him another look in. Um, What's your, what would you, what opening combination would you go for the Sri Lankan series coming up? Do you, does Harris stay in? I think, I think he's I think, to yeah, stay. yeah, he's good, but I think Finch probably has to go. Yeah, he's, from, he has been cut. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Tough. I don't love Kawaja as an opener. I think mm-hmm. he's, if he, if he's going to be in there, he's probably got to be three or four or five, personally. Yeah, okay. So it's prob- it could probably bring in someone fresh for that role. What, what do you think? Um, yeah, so I, think I would go with the openers of Harris, because I think he was probably one of our better batsmen yeah. in the yeah, India series. And then Joe Burns as the other opener. Yeah. Um, I think he's I think he's the most prolific scorer in the, in the Shield this yeah. season. Yeah. Um, and then, like you said, I'd probably drop Lab, uh, sorry, um, Kawaja down to three or four. Yeah. Um, I think Marsh has got to go. I think they're going to persist with Labuschagne. Yeah. At number three. Um, that's a that's a weird one for me though. 
him and getting peaked. To be, to be fair to uh, Lavishane, he played very well, I thought, when mm. he came in. He looked very solid. Mm. Got out to a very good catch from Coley on the leg side. Yeah. Um, but he looked pretty solid. I think that's why they wanted someone like that at number three who's yeah. going to play you know, with good technique and stuff like that. Someone like Wade, I think, I, well, I believe that they're... <clears throat> Their concern with him is he plays a little bit like across the line. I know that that's the big concern with Hanscom in yeah. test cricket. Mm. Um, yeah, they his technique they feel is flawed. Yeah. At the end of the day, though, if you make runs, you make runs. Doesn't really matter. I suppose. I guess. I guess the real concern would be for because you got to think about the Ashes series and. The swinging duke ball. Yeah. So I guess some players, I do accept that some players are more likely yeah. to perform well in English conditions. So I guess we have to think about that. What do you think of this selection of this young Will Pukowski guy? I mean, I'm kind of picked out of nowhere. I'm, I guess I'm happy to do it for the Sri Lanka series. Mm. It doesn't really mean much. I'm sure. Should give him a look in and some experience. Mm. Do I want him in the starting Ashes 11? No, not unless he absolutely smashes the house down against Sri Lanka. I could be wrong, but I think we've only got these two tests until the Ashes. I don't know if there's any more test cricket before then. Because okay. we've got a Cricket World Cup right before the Ashes. I'm actually really looking forward to the, yeah. the one-day World Cup. Yeah. Um, that's going to be a pretty, pretty exciting World Cup, I think. Mm. There's a lot. It's, it's really good in uh, one-day cricket at the moment. It feels like a lot of the teams at top South Africa, Pakistan. I know Pakistan beat South Africa last night. Um... Yeah, Australia beat India. Yeah. In, like, it just feels quite quite even, actually, in yeah. the short format at the moment. It, it just depends on the night. Um, interesting, speaking of South Africa, I noticed that um, Hashim Amla was getting a lot of stick. He stayed, I, I believe he stayed in for 50, the 50 overs and made 108 or something like that. Okay, um, and didn't, is that how yeah. they didn't, he didn't score enough? Yeah, yeah. Wow. I remember back in the day that you... Like, I've seen openers carry their about 50 overs and barely make 100, if I that. I think he was. <laughs> um, I think it might have been the lowest ODI score for a team that stayed in for the whole 50. Oh, really? Possibly, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Interesting. I'll have to look into that. That's I that. could be completely wrong. I, just thought <laughs> I saw something about that. So on, you just threw that on stat out there? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just saying, I could be wrong. I, I think it was a cricket. Song. Yeah, no, yeah. fair enough. Oh, I'll look it up now. All right, yeah, I feel like we have to for the listeners. Interesting stuff. Um, what? It seems like it seems like in the test side we don't really have anyone coming in, as yeah. in putting pressure on the current team to come in and, and, That's true. and make runs. But the one day side does seem to have that good problem. Yeah, you know, so we we obviously had a very competitive series against India where we performed pretty well. Uh, and then in the BBL, you've got really talented guys who can't break into the side. You've got Darcy Short making runs. Ash Turner, uh, Ashton Turner, sorry. Yeah, he um, he's having a great season with the bat as well. He, yeah. he, I think he was brought into the squad to play India but didn't actually crack the game. Uh, Bancroft has made a very good start. Uh, oh, sorry, a good comeback from um, his suspension. Yeah. And then there's Mitch Marsh who wasn't even in the side because of illness. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, that's a lot of batting talent we actually can't cram into the side. Yeah, um, yeah, I totally agree with you. Test side, there's not many people banging down the door. ODI, I feel like we could switch the 11 and still field a competitive team True. almost. Mm. I really like, really like Darcy Short, really like Ashton Turner. Mm. I think both those two have to be in the squad. Yep. Um, for any one days. Um, you know, there's lots of good short format Australian players right now. I think there's been a change of emphasis towards the shorter format and white ball cricket in Australia and yeah, now we're actually yeah. producing talented yeah. uh, talented players and I wonder if that's having an effect on guys who can't who don't have the technique to hold, um, you know to like someone like Darcy Short is an yeah. amazing limited overs player but I, what's his first class average probably pretty low yeah I, I don't know yeah um, yeah I think it's like Mid-30s. early 30s if yeah, that okay. and then but his, his list A average shows one day average is 45 so yeah. that's very solid um, and you got Smith to come back. Yeah, I mean, he's a gun. He'll definitely, hopefully, if his uh, elbows could be in for the yeah, World Cup. Yeah, that's true. Um, I mean, is Warner retired from short format? Don't think so. Don't think so. I mean, he, he's a right. great sh- short format player himself. True. I think um, it remains to be seen whether he comes into the team again. 
Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm a big... I think they've done their punishment. I think they've been ostracised enough. If I think if he has form at the bat, mm. he should be picked. People should... You sure. know what I mean? The selectors shouldn't not pick him if he's playing amazing just because... True. Of what happened, that's my opinion. Yeah, I agree with that, yeah. I think Finch, the current captain, is probably the one in danger of dropping out from the team, which is sad. Yes, it, what, in the ODI? Yeah, or? in the ODI side, so the yeah. guy the guy that's going to make way for all these guys. Um, you know, Marsh and Hanscom were making runs in the middle of the order. Yeah, there's... It, I heard on the radio the other day, they said, has there ever been a player as in form with the white ball and out form <laughs> with the red ball at the same time and they couldn't think of a single person. Mm. Who's... 400s in his last eight ODI short yeah. rush. That's incredible. It's a bit bit strange, isn't it? It's almost like the nerve, the mental side of the test cricket, he just can't mm. handle it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I mean, I'd be flipping around the ODI squad a bit. I mean, I think yeah, I've put it out there before. I'm not a huge Maxwell um, fan. Interesting. Um, like, I'm not, nothing against the guy personally. Yeah. I just don't think he's reliable. I think we've, mm-hmm. if we've got Stoinis, Hanscom and Maxwell, I feel like that's a little prone to a batting collapse. Especially when you've got guys like Marsh and Kawaja at the top order. They're not exactly True. sturdy. Yeah. Um, I love Stoinis, though. I love Stoinis. I think he's too talented not to include. I agree. That's that's why mm. I think Maxwell has to be the one to make way. Interesting. Maxwell is such an incredible finisher, though. He's pro- unlike many others. The Andrew Simon style, um, come in, in the later overs and score fifty off twenty if he if he needs to. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I really I like that guy. I, I don't think there's enough of that for me personally. Okay. Interesting. Probably doesn't um, offer enough with the ball as well, in my opinion. No. Maxwell probably you probably only in, he's like a part timer. He'd probably be the one I'd be looking at bringing in short or Turner mm-hmm. for at least for the Sri Lanka series and trying them out yeah um, well yeah I mean Maxwell I think the Australian side wants to have at least six bowling options that's the other thing to be aware of so but short and, Tur- and Turner both very mm. like decent um, unorthodox bowlers especially yeah. short yeah, so yeah, sure it does bother. I don't yeah. think I don't think we're actually missing. We'd be missing out that I much suppose, by yeah. swap, swapping Maxwell for him in the yeah. bowling department. You're probably missing out on none for twenty five or four overs. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, speaking of, I actually think probably our weakness this series against India was our middle overs bowling. So new ball mm-hmm. bowling was good. I love Jason Berendorf and obviously Jai Richardson had an amazing yeah. series as well. Uh, and then you got Cummins, Stark, and Hazelwood to come back as well, but. We would take wickets early, and then partly because the Indian middle order is so strong with Kohli and Dhoni, but um, and uh, Sharma in that first game. But it seems like we just can't keep the pressure on by taking wickets in the middle overs. Yeah, I, I think we don't quite have... We're missing out on that real line length. I mean, mm. Berendorf is a bit like that. Yeah. But we're just missing out on that just line length, mm. like again and again and again yeah. sort of guy in the ODI at the moment which and those guys are so good for the limited overs yeah those have a good economy true um, but Mitch. I mean Richardson and Berendorf they've been very good I think in the yeah. ODI side I agree um, Siddle's you know he's a hard worker he's probably got a bit of work to do I think he's probably the one who might drop out yep um, but I think Richardson and Berendorf um yeah, I agree. Been very well. I wouldn't be bringing in um, Stark or any of those guys for those two at the moment, personally. Yeah, I definitely agree with Berendorf. I reckon that I reckon they might roll with Stark and Cummins. Yeah. Okay. When they're back in the one day side, personally, but yeah, um, and we seem we still have a problem where we don't have a good spinner in one days. Yeah, I, Nathan Lyon, I think. He didn't, didn't take, take a wicket, I don't wicket? think. No, 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 wickets, yeah. no. He's, he doesn't seem to do too well with the white ball. And Zampa, to his credit, bowled fairly well, but he just doesn't take wickets. Mm. You know, it's all good going for like four and a half and over for ten overs, but if you just get none for every game, it's a little bit pointless. And that's what To be fair, though, that does work in 50 over cricket, though, because you build pressure. True. Then they but... might try and score off Stoyness. Mm. You know what I mean? A bit more heavily than, than get a wicket. True, but I guess we need to be 
like I said, taking wickets in the middle overs, and that's yeah. what I reckon costs us against India. Even when we'd have them three down for like less than a hundred, they'd go three to two hundred. And don't forget, Indi- the, Indi- the Indian side are the best spin batting side True. in the world. True. Um, mm. So, yeah, it's interesting. There doesn't really seem to be uh, many spinners really knocking the door down, does no. there? No. I don't know, it's almost no, feels Lloyd like a little Pope. bit of a lost uh, yeah, lost I, art form. We need a new a new warning. So. I don't know why we don't produce good spinners. Is it the pitches though? Are the pitches just too flat track? But I mean, you get I like you get be... Afghanistani players coming yeah. here and just tearing the BBL apart. Admittedly, yeah. Rashid Khan's very good, and then that Nepalese guy. I just think it would be very demotivating as like an eighteen-year-old spinner yeah. going onto the wacker where it's just dry and flat as all. I suppose. And just get. <laughs> I don't, I just think, yeah. You think I Australia is just not. I don't know. A great thing about cricket. What, what I love about cricket is that countries like play cricket with their own identity, mm. and I think like part of Australian identity is actually the more than non spinners. I know we've mm. had the greatest spinner ever in Warning, yeah. But we're definitely, I think, a more pace, yeah, sort of. I think they said Warney made spin fashionable in Australia. Yeah. Uh, and it just so happened that McGill and Hogg played at the same time. Yeah. You know, if we had those guys back to back, we wouldn't be having this conversation about how we don't have any good spinners. And I guess Lyon's pretty good. He is very good. But, I mean, Especially in the long format. There's spinners in the middle there, like Bryce McGain, Nathan Horitz, um, John Holland's on right. I'm not Steve buying this, uh, this Nathan Lyon. It's... As good as Warney nah. stuff that people are putting out, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, yeah, no, he's, he's decent, but he's, yeah, he's not, not Warney, like, the talent. Yeah. So, is it the end of the Marsh Brothers in, in the test side, do you think? Um, it sounds like Sean might be getting to the point where he's like... Had enough. I've had a good crack. Yeah. I don't know. I like even in the media. I think he said he was uncertain whether he was going to play Test cricket again. You can't tell he's what he ever says in the media, though. He's <laughs> yeah, he's not not a great uh, speaker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess. I mean, I mean, at thirty five, Sean, yeah. like, if he's if he's not in the next Ashes side, like, surely he's he's done. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you, as you, you said earlier, you think you think there's room for him. I think there's room for him in the squad for the Ashes, yeah, okay. for sure. Yeah. Um, I wonder how he is in English conditions. Yeah, he's played a lot of county cricket. Yeah. But, okay. um, yeah, I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's very tough with him. I mean, at the end of the day, you have to make scores and he hasn't made scores, so. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess, yeah, you're going to pay for that, aren't you? If, I think he could be a very good specialist one day and 320 player for the rest of his career. Yeah. I reckon, yeah, maybe. I mean, he was the IPL top scorer, I think, maybe for two years. Yeah, yeah. Um, he was amazing. So and he's wonderful. It's strange that he's that good in short form. I think it must be psychological. Yeah, it must be. At least partly. I, I, I saw a few things saying apparently he gets very, very nervous. Right, okay. Because when he, in the first innings, when he... Um, makes over 10 he averages like 60 or something 60 or yeah, something ridiculous yeah. that's very true even in the BBL I, know, I remember when he would um, when like he, he never really starts really commandingly and then if he if he gets in and then starts middling it he will yeah. hit a match winning 70 not yeah. out um, what about Bancroft is there room for him in the test side I think so I yeah. think so well yeah I mean me since he's come back it's been very I good. feel like he's been I actually don't think I've ever seen him play as well as he played yeah. the other night. Yeah, I guess maybe he's come back mental with like some mental resolve, and he's clearly got a point to prove. You know, he's playing like he's got a point to prove. I think I, I, one thing I took from that interview you did with Gilchrist. Yeah, I know a lot of people didn't like it because he threw Warner under the bus. Yeah. Um, but one thing I did like is that he kind of said that he reached a point where he thought he just didn't care anymore. He's mm. just. He didn't care what people thought because yeah. he knows people are gonna, you know, hate him. So he's just mm. like, you know what, I might as well just get on with it and yeah. just do it, which is a really good attitude to have. I true, think. true. It's kind of sad that it got to that point. Yeah, because I mean, the guy literally just scratched some sandpaper if you've on a seen his, <laughs> his Instagram. The, the whole, it's every photo he puts up is just a hundred comments like you're a cheater, burning oh, hell, like 
all this stuff. That's Cricket Australia's fault, in my opinion. Yeah, they really... No, it's, not completely. It's a but massive media beat up as well. Yeah, it's true. It's true. It is. Yeah, that's true. Um, I feel like they added. But there was the a fire. lot of people around the country that were very yeah. upset as but well. I agree, and there, there's a lot of pretentious people writing in saying, "I'm ashamed to tell my boy what happened." And it's like, yeah. come on, mate! Like, you, are you, have you got your head in the sand? That happened. It happens so much. If Cricket Australia, in my opinion, had just banned them for a series or two or three months. We would have stopped talking about it as soon as the ban ended, and then Bancroft and Warner and Smith would have had a much easier year than they have done. That's what I say. When uh, that's what I was saying with Warner, if mm. if the form weren't selection, yeah. pick them. Don't don't sure. don't let you know what's happened in the past influence whether they get a game or I, not. I think that's ridiculous. I agree, but I, I my concern would be is he a toxic presence in the in the changing room because. <laughs> sounds dirty but yeah. um, you know if, if, the, if he's really him you know hated I think people forget that he's been through a lot he lost mm. a um, I think they had a stillborn child or something okay. this year oh, that um, sucks. He, he was the guy that you know like held Phil, Phil Hughes when he got killed mm. Um, mm. like he's been through a lot as well mm. um, that's no excuse yeah yeah but, I see what you're saying I don't know. I think I just I'm a big believer in giving second chances. Yeah, that's that's fair. That's a fair attitude. Yeah. yeah. Um, I guess you... I'd like to see Stoinis in the test side. Yeah. I'd like to see him given a crack for sure. I think there's well, yeah. To sort of circle back to the the question you asked me about the Marsh brothers. Yeah. You know, Mitch still was. Like, he's 26 years old. He's a year older than us. He's still got a lot of cricket ahead of him. He's got plenty of time to turn that He's around. He's definitely not, not done at test level, yeah. I don't think. No. But right now, I think that yeah. Stoinis and a few others are definitely above him. Yeah, they've gone past him because I think yeah. we were saying the other day, Mitch is like almost just as talented as Sean. When Mitch was... I remember when Mitch was 21 when he was like the Australia A yeah. captain. Yeah. I saw him play a few games and I was like, this guy is mm. going to be like... I thought he was going to be the next... Shane Not Watson. necessarily Ricky Ponting, but yeah, yeah Shane Watson. Yeah. Probably better than Shane. Yeah. Like a better version of Shane Watson. Yeah. I agree. I, I actually don't know if he's improved since he was 21 or 22. I don't... Yeah, he I might don't think his have. ability to score I mean, has he improved. Looked, he was a pretty big boy at that age. Mm. It's, it's possible that he just matured very early yeah. and then every all the others in his year kind of caught him up a little bit. Yeah. But, I mean, even at BBL level, I remember him having good innings. I wouldn't be surprised if his like average hasn't changed. But, nah, but I'm probably the, talking about right, people who boo him when he comes oh, like yeah. play for Australia. Like, yeah. come on, that's shocking. Yeah, who is it that said it was? Oh, it's good natured booing. It's like probably oh some guy. So I forgot. Was it Mark Stevens or something Tra- like that? Travis Head. He said he was like pretty unhappy with it. Yeah, um, the same people that probably complain about um, you know. Booing it up the stadium. <laughs> yeah. Or Perth. Uh, Eagles. Patterson. Yeah, yeah. Boo Joe Watson. We do boo a lot, to be fair, the Eagles. But, yeah, yeah it's all good. So there was a lot of booing at the grand final. Crowd. Yeah, yeah. That's what's going to happen in sport. I agree. As long as it doesn't get abusive. Yeah. Like, booing the umpires, it's iffy. I, I don't mind them going nuts at, an, like at a bad umpiring decision. No. I, I think that creates atmosphere. I like that. Yeah. Booing the umpires off the ground. Oh, uh, that's, yeah, not really ideal. I don't, I don't really no. rate that. As long as it ends on the football field. Yeah, that's true. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. That's, uh, anyway, that was a massive segue <laughs> um, from story. That's, yeah, okay, actually, someone else has asked a question. Um, should the following players be considered for the Ashes Tour? Short... Stoinis and Maxwell. We've kind of half answered well, all this. I've said that I'd like Stoinis yep. in the squad. Yeah. Maxwell, oh, such a tough one. Mm. The problem is, if you're bringing people in, you're taking people out, aren't you? Yeah. So, well, the, uh, let's say Stoinis and Maxwell and Marsh are competing for the same spot as the fifth bowler. It, I'm going Stoinis. Yeah. Yeah, out of those two. The then thing is, probably Maxwell. Maxwell to his credit, has a lot of shield runs, and I do think that should be rewarded. But, as a fifth bowler in England, I don't want it to be an offie. I'd rather, you'd rather have a seamer, in my opinion, so that brings Mitch or Stoinis, Mitch Marsh or Stoinis yeah. into the equation. Um, and I don't know if that will roll with just the four, four bowlers and the, no fifth bowler. And short, no, I don't think he'll be in the test squad. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. His first class average is pretty average from memory uh, no pun intended and uh, 
I don't think he's a candidate for long term, long format cricket. I th- he's definitely a short format um, international. Pun. Keep rolling. Yeah. Hey? I said another pun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, did we touch on what our World Cup squad? We've we've talked about the one day squad. Um, do you think? What, what Alex Carey's an interesting one. I actually have him not in my one World Cup squad. My logic for that is Bancroft and Hanscom can both keep. Yeah. And both are better uh, batsmen. Better batsmen. I'd and probably agree with you there. And I think both um, deserve. Even though chance. Kerry, he's been okay. He hasn't been yeah. worse. But I probably agree with you. Mm. Bancroft probably needs to prove a little bit more at state level. I think before. Sure. Sure. Um, yeah, he's never played an ODI, ODI game yeah, for okay. Australia Bancroft, just yeah, T20 true. and Test. True, yeah. Um, mm. yeah. I but mean, I'm sure this guy's been missing out as well. Yeah. Obviously, being WA, like big yeah. Scorchers fans, we're always going to be slightly more biased towards yeah. Berendorf and Richard. Yeah, Richardson. I do genuinely think Berendorf is, is just about as good as any other bowler we have in limited overs. Yeah, I'm um, a big fan of Ty as well. Yeah, yeah, uh, okay. He's, a, he's kind of like a death, yeah. Oh, he's like a death bowling specialist, which yeah. is a good skill to have. Yeah. Uh, except for, yeah, the other night, 6-4-6. Six, six. Yeah. That was, that's sad. But. There's, um, who's the quick from Tasmania? Um, Jackson Bird. No, he played for the Hurricanes. He's, uh, he's looking really good at the moment. I'm trying to think who plays for him. Just for pace and like elite, electric bowling, he looks really good. I'm, I can't even think who you think of. I'll Google him. I'm trying to think of their bowling I'll attack. Find out. <laughs> I'm thinking of Golbus. They've got Jofra Archer. I'm sure you're not talking about him. <laughs> no. Um... Chris Tremaine's an interesting one who never really gets a gig. Yeah. Uh, yet to debut, but has been one of the better Shield performers over a consistent period of time. Also plays in Victoria on absolute road pitches, and he's still the Shield's, like, one of the, I think, the best wicket taker, Chris Tremaine, so. Riley Meredith, he was the... Um, ah, yeah, no, I know. I like bowler. I yeah. like the look of him. Okay. Yeah. Is he young? I don't even know. Yeah, right. I never... Really watched him until this season. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Must have been. I don't know too much. But about he's him. definitely one to watch. I think. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Mm, cool. Um. All right. Well, we got a few more questions. Uh, did we finish all the cricket ones? I think we have. That'll do anyway. Um. I kind of answered this in the last podcast, but I'll ask you because you weren't here. You were with. Uh, oh, you were down here. Uh, what do you think of the new AFL X format? That question comes from Michael Stanton, one of the better, well, one of the more uh, consistent contributors on Discord. Yeah, it's uh, it's a bit funny. I don't know. Um, like half of me is just like I don't want to buy to do with AFL X. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. I guess I'm intrigued. Mm. Um, yeah. What, what, what do you think about like the concept versus last year? Because last year was like everyone... I don't. I don't mind actually mixing teams up I think that's that's okay with me mm. um, doing this whole draft I think it makes um, it more interesting yeah it does make it more interesting I don't yeah. really I mean I don't really get the whole super power thing I guess that's because <laughs> yeah, Marvel, Marvel yeah. yeah but um they're clearly trying to like market towards kids because they yeah. I guess they're worried about losing kids to other sports I always come back back to the thing with AFLX it's just for me, it's just a version of AFL that's not as good as AFL, yeah. so I'd rather see AFL. Sure. Yeah. I guess they're coming up with like a, a T20 version. Yeah. To engage it. Okay. And I think the actual sport to watch is average. Yeah. Because it just t- takes away all the contention. It's good only because we don't have regular <laughs> AFL games. Mm. But yeah, I'm willing to give it a go. Yeah, yeah. I'll give it a go. Yeah, um, and then quickly forget about it. Yeah. After it's over and watch some JLT. Yeah. That's pretty much it, yeah. Quick, um, quick, quick thoughts. Yep. Um, who's who's going to win off the top of your head? But the teams haven't been picked, have they? Yeah, I want you to pick one one team. What, what are the colours? <sighs> I don't pur- even remember, I know there's purple because, I don't know, they just went with five free men or purple. Oh, yeah. Rewalt is green, Dangerfield's blue, and Eddie Betts, I think, is kind of like orangey, ready. Mm. 
Mate, I got no idea. The teams haven't been, even been picked. I don't know. Um, no, who's good. the most suited it to the format out of all those players? Probably Danger. Yeah, Danger or even Bets, I think, is a smoky. I feel like Fife wouldn't be uh, as utilised because he's just like he's a clearance beast. I don't feel like there's going to yeah. be that much clearance yeah, in nah. this, this tournament. And Jack Rewell, nah, not really. I think Fife and Dangerfield will love it because they're real big... Uh... They're big on the business marketing True. sort of side of it, so to be the face of a football team. Yeah. Which I suppose they almost already are. I feel like Ablett would tear it to shreds. Well, yeah, he'd he tear anything to but... shreds. Yeah. He's my goat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you named your goat Gablet, didn't you? It's yeah. Cute. yeah. Gablet Jr. Yeah. <laughs> um, Michael's also asked us a few more questions about the rule changes for next year. Yeah. So, um, why did. Why do the AFL ban runners during open play, and what's the point of them now? Why did because they of ban Alex them? I guess Alex Woodward yeah. ruined everything. No, I mean, there has there has been instances of the like that, that yeah. happen. You know, fairly mm-hmm. every season there's maybe three or four or five. Yeah. Um, in other sports, like they ban coaching, don't they? Like so, like for instance, tennis. I'm pretty sure you're not allowed to coach the player during the game. Yeah, I don't watch tennis, so I could be wrong. So I mean, how are you supposed to do that though when you have interchange and yeah, that's yeah, true. That would that would not work in AFL. In that's true. Um, but yeah, that that is kind of strange about tennis. Actually, thinking about it, because mm. like, I saw it on the news like uh, was it Serena Williams okay. was. Um, Oh, she went nuts. She had a meltdown. I think she was accused of cheating in the sense that somebody was coaching her. I could be butchering that because I watched it on another podcast. Um, but I think that's what happened. We're like the kings of half. Yeah, yeah half it could have happened. Facts here. Jesus. Yeah, Hashim Amalo broke a few records. Yeah. Serena Williams had a meltdown. <laughs> Both may not have happened. Yeah. Nah. Um, Disclaimer. What about the... Uh, what about the third man up rule? Mark was always like asking. Um, but what do you say? So um, the it, the uh, AFL did complain about congestion, but then they removed a rule where a player can actually knock the ball further away from the contest. Yeah. Which I think that one, to be fair, is definitely about protecting ruckmen. Mm. Um, I know a lot of ruckmen were getting quite badly, you know, bruised along their body, ribs, okay. and upper thighs and stuff because you've just got these like guys like yeah, like Fife and Dangerfield just taking huge run-ups and jumping into them like, yeah. from the boundary when yeah. normal, the other two ruckmen, the normal ruckmen, are only allowed mm. to stand and wrestle. Also kind of protects the ruckman in another way. It protects the position of a ruckman. So That's Gorn true. and Grundy, uh, for instance, were two of the absolute best players this season. It's definitely um, made the ruck... The, More important. The good rucks uh, seem better Yeah, third man up. Yeah. I personally like it. Like, I like like, I like the lack of third man up. I, I think it's I think it's better. Um, I don't have a huge opinion, but I yeah. understand probably why they got rid of it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and the six 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 rule. So that's where you have to start Satan. six players in it. Yeah, the yeah. Satan rule. Uh, um, six players in each part of the ground. I don't know. Uh, that's gonna have to be. Yeah, seen. I guess we have to see. I don't like. Yeah, I really don't like trying to make the game too controlled. Yeah. Um, I, I wonder how much of an effect it's actually going to have. I think it'll have a big effect on coaching. I guess, but so I mean, as soon as of, the... So much of the strategy in AFL is based upon extra players mm. in certain areas of the ground. Yeah. So a lot like of teams moment. will either have, you know, an extra man in midfield or an extra man behind the kick mm. often, mm. Um, an extra man in defence quite often. So yeah. it's I think it makes it harder for the coaches. But I guess for like it it's only after a goal that you have to go six 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 as far as I'm aware. So yeah. you know, as soon as the play is locked up you can still send a man back. Yeah, it, it's after a goal, isn't it? Because yeah. I hate the idea of every time a ball up, that people are just sprinting back to. Yeah, yeah, that's um, right. Uh, I don't. I'm not actually that bothered with the state of the game in terms of congestion. It didn't bother me. You know, when people were saying it's a rolling ball and it's scrappy and stuff, I liked it. Yeah. I think they trialed these rules in the VFL, if I'm not mistaken, and they actually did record like a ten percent improvement in like. You know, less stoppages, okay. more goals, and stuff like that. Um, I think there is a, um, there is a, I don't know, a really quick change 
in how the game's played mm-hmm. now, especially compared to even 10 years ago. I think the way that we went from Hawthorne, who are extremely highly skilled, mm-hmm. short, precision kicking, mm-hmm. um, to Richmond, absolute manic pressure. Um, and then I feel like with Eagles, we've almost come almost a, a little bit back around to more of just an even game plan across yeah, that's the board. True. They're not that's really... True. The Eagles don't really have a thing. Do you know what I mean? They're not like yeah. a massive pressure side. They're not a massive, yeah. I don't know, skilled side. Pretty well-rounded, yeah, I'd say. I yeah, are. that's true. But yeah, very strong ball movement. Uh, yeah, I was thinking today, I guess one thing the Eagles did kind of innovate, uh, if you could even call it that, was the fact that they went away from stacking midfielders in like a forward line so mm. they picked more specialist forwards and specialist defenders and they actually played less midfielders this year yeah. and I think as a product they're a product of that they actually got much more efficient like their forward line was much better this year they also had more talent like Rioli and Ryan that weren't, weren't there last year um, so I'd say that's the biggest change I've done um, yeah. but yeah not to get too evil centric yeah <laughs> I bought it up. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's true. Um, but yeah, it uh, remains to be seen on the 666 rule. I'm just going to pretend it, it's not a thing. Yeah. Because you probably won't notice it. So, yeah. I mean, more teams theoretically may get a run, run on, and we may see more blowouts because. That's what I'm a little bit worried about. Yeah. I want to check out it's going to make it worse for Carlton and Fremantle and Brisbane. Gold Coast. Yeah. Gold Coast, good. Yeah. Won't be anyway, to, yeah. speaking of Gold Coast, we'll have a quick break and then get back to you. Okay, sounds good. Alright, just a couple of questions to go and then sure. we'll get a coffee or something. Um, Aiden from the Discord has asked us a couple of questions. G'day, Aiden. Um, how much of an impact will Tom Lynch have on Richmond in his first year? Well, it's a tough one to tell, isn't it? Um, they've already got such a good forward um, they're going to be very hard to defend against I yeah. think um, Rewalt is well he won the common didn't he he's one of the best yeah. forwards in the game be interesting to see how he fits in with their game plan because I don't think he sort of gels like 100% with the way that Richmond play mm. so they'll have to, but I'm sure he'll fit in because he's, he's a good enough player too anyway um, yeah Richmond obviously have been playing with one main key forward for several years and have structured around that. I really wouldn't be surprised if Rewalt spends a lot more time up the ground now. Yeah, that's a, that's a good suggestion, actually. Yeah, you think... Lynch I mean, I'm not a huge fan of it because he kicks so many goals. You might as well... Mm. I'm a big fan in leaving goal kickers in the forward line. Yeah. But I, I don't know if there's... There's not room for both of them in the goal square. Mm. Is there... One of them's going to have to be slightly more upfield than the other. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I think I feel like Rewalt's the yeah, more uh, likely of the two to do that. He's more, probably more athletic. He's a better mm. mover. Yeah. But I mean, Lynch is probably a slightly better grab than Rewalt. Is yeah. He contested. Yeah. He's a little bit bigger. Um, it be so very interesting to see how he goes in a top 14 because he, mm. he's been a very good goal kicker in a team that's finished what, bottom six almost every year in their existence. I think he has a 66 goal season or something like that. Tom yeah, that, he's very impressive. Yeah, so. I, I, don't, I don't have him on the um, quite on the elite. Sure, he, he's very very good, but sure. I don't have him on the Buddy Franklin, Josh Kennedy level. No, yeah, yeah that's fair. Yeah, and um, but I think he, yeah, he obviously does have the potential. He's 26 or yeah, turning 27 this year. Yeah. Um, and as we said, this will be the first time he's played in a good team. Mm. So, you know, maybe he does have a 75 goal season in him. But then again, he was, how much of the traffic was he getting at Gold Coast? Probably all of it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> all 10 he's inside not get 50s. That at Richmond. No, I guess not. I guess not. But we, Richmond will now be a lot less predictable, I guess, going yeah. forward. Um, you know, it's certainly not going to make them worse. Whether it makes them, you know, it's hard to improve on being minor premiers as well. <laughs> I am, I, I'm still glad, I think I would be more worried if you had gone to Collingwood, to be honest. Mm. Yeah, I guess Collingwood don't really have anyone. Yeah, that would really just complete Collingwood's team. Yeah, that's true. They're going to be a scary team, added, their mid, added to their midfield this offseason. 
arguably the best midfielder in the game at the moment, Collingwood. I mean, some people are saying the best ever, which you can't say that before we've no. even played together. Yeah, no. But um, they're very good. Yeah. A lot of depth. No Brownlow medalists, though. Not that it really, not that, that means everything, but it's just interesting. Uh, I mean, Pendlebury is probably like the closest thing you can get to being a Brownlow without winning, yeah. without winning one. Yeah. Um, That's true. Yeah. Um, and a final question from Aiden. Do you wish there was an updated iOS AFL game? Um, I always used to like the... It would be very tough to do like a full AFL game on your phone, but I always yeah. liked the uh, like goal-kicking ones and yeah, stuff okay. like that. So yeah. yeah, I'm sure... I'd be down for it. What about you? I've literally never played an iOS AFL game in my yeah. life. I mean, is, <laughs> is Dream Team an iOS AFL game? It is, sort of. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't think that's what he means. No, yeah. <laughs> do you wish they'd uh, update the AFL Dream Team map? Oh, I do. <laughs> apparently there is big changes to Dream Team this year. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm looking forward to getting my team in. Yeah, I think you can... Yeah, there's a lot of Supercoach chat on the um, Discord. I've never used Supercoach, but everyone's raving about it. What do, what, what do you guys use? Maybe tell us in the Discord if you're more of a yeah. dream teamer or a super coach. Yeah. I've always been a dream teamer, mm. purely just for the fact that that's what my mates play. True, me too. Um, I don't know. I haven't read into super coach too much, but I believe it kind of rewards efficiency and things yeah. like that a little bit more, whereas yeah. dream teams is very much a stats game. Yeah, interesting. Like... I mean, Dream Team's going to be very interesting now that Tom Mitchell's out. True. It levels the playing field big time. So true. Like, yeah. levels above anyone else. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Rockcliffe, I reckon, I'll back in to have another good season. Yeah. I uh, missed the preseason last year. Um, I feel like he might be a bit of a... Him and McRae will probably be the first two guys I get for my midfield. McRae. Interesting. Yeah, he was a pretty... He had a very good... The year he was very, year. very good at the start. I think he mm. like waned a little bit. Yeah, he did. He did. I think I'm, he got injured I'm, at one point. I'm slightly thinking I might get on the bond because he's going to be a tad cheaper. Because I don't, see, and I think he's got the quality to mm. to um, come good again. Yeah, true. He just needs more midfield time, I reckon. I think they plucked him up forward a yeah. lot this year, last year. It's become a very big. Uh, mm. Midfielders that are going forward. Yeah, uh, Fife, Martin, Bond. Any, the danger. Any mids that's so, over 190 yeah. now spends a fairly significant... Especially um, last year, uh, Danger and Martin. Like, they... Uh, yeah. Martin was spending more than 50% of some games. So what reward as well? What was the reward? What did they get out of that? I guess... I, I can see it from the perspective, actually, that it keeps them slightly fresher throughout the season. Okay. Not yeah. quite putting the hard yards into them and then save them for... I suppose. But, I mean... But I still think you want Dusty getting 30 touches a game and there were games where he was getting, like, 15 to 20 because he was playing mm. forward. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh, well. Yeah, that was pretty good considering we are so hungover. This is two out of the three of the last podcasts we've done. I've been absolutely hungover as a sky. Oh, really? Yeah, it's very unprofessional. I think I have to stop doing it. But, yeah, thanks for your hospitality. No worries. It's actually a pretty cool setting. I reckon we should do more podcasts here in the future. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, cool. All right. All right. Catch you later, guys. Take it easy, boys. See ya. And ladies.